All right, so in this lecture assignment, we'll be working on uh, 3D textures. And um, you'll download the source file from there. And <clears throat> if you look at Google Images, you'll find obviously lots of 3D textures. And the purpose for these is that um, when you're working in 3D, when you want to get certain things to look a certain way, um, typically you'll grab a texture to do that. So uh, in some cases, oops, texture. There we go. Uh, so in some cases you need to create them. Sometimes you can download them. Um, if you have something um, like a brick wall <clears throat> in 3D, it's just a flat plane. So in order to make it look like a brick wall, we have to put a picture of a brick wall on it. So what we're going to do in this one is go through some processing tools that we'll use. So you can take the uh, source images and put them in your folder. Uh, we're going to get started with this gray one that says textures, com, brick grout, less. And you'll have three turn-ins for this. <clears throat> one of them will be a brick wall like this with some uh, items on it. Another one will be this window image. So you got the brick wall, you got the window image, and then we'll have this one. Uh, and this one we have to um, touch up. So that's missing some of the gray in the bottom. So that's something we want to correct. Um, also, if we were to take this and tile it, it would not be tileable. And if I control A, control C, make a new document. <clears throat> uh, ba, ba, da, da. I'm just going to make this huge, like 2600 by 2600. Okay, so if I were to paste this here, and then I duplicated it and pulled it down to that area. Uh, you can definitely see that there is a weird spot where one edge comes into this. So it definitely looks like there's a seam happening here. And so if this was something that, you know, we wanted to use in 3D, um, it would be very difficult to use, especially with this obviously gray area. Uh, if I duplicated it the other way, we would still get this like weird seam happening, okay? So our job one on this one is to make this so that it's fixed, so we don't have that. And then also make sure that it is uh, tileable. So I'm going to uh, give it a name, throw it in my folder. Sarcona uh, Seamless Gray Brick or Stone or whatever. Oops, not as a JPEG though. as a PSD. All right, so the first thing I need to do is unlock this background layer. So I just unlock it. Oops. And under filter, other, offset, I'm going to offset this image. Now what it does is it will take the image and just scoot it over. That way I can see that's where the seam is. I'll do the same thing the other way. And just kind of indiscriminately, you know, if you make it even, 800 and 800 then it should be good enough we can see where the seam is we reset it by going to negative 800 negative 800 and it works all right so first we need to get rid of the seam so it's just a matter of using your um, cloning stamping whatever tools to take care of it so you can use those um, so I'm gonna try the uh, stamp first the clone stamp so I'm gonna hold alt in an area here and then I don't want to start drawing right on that left that layer just like we talked about in the photo uh, touch-up so I'll make a new layer make sure I'm at current and below and the hardest thing here because this is kind of so random is we want to make sure that it looks natural okay so as I start doing this you can see how that seam is pretty much going away 
And there's still obviously going to be some touch-up work here, but it's um, it's not going to be a one sh one stop shop. Um, a lot of this is going to be kind of tweaking it, um, looking at where this brick comes in, looking at where that brick comes in, and this one. I'm going to skip that area. I'll go down to this area that seems like it uh, will fill kind of nicely. And I'm just kind of looking at where my clone stamp is going to stamp and seeing if it's a good match. All right, so I got my first pass done. Uh, now I'm gonna grab a second pass. And what I do is I like to alternate sides, so I'll switch to this side now. Alt click that. There you go. Now if you look, I have <clears throat> the same pattern here and the same pattern there, and that's gonna look odd. So I always want to resample so that I create as organic and natural of a texture as possible. And we haven't touched that yet, obviously we will. I'm trying to grab stuff from just random locations and fill that in. a weird spot. There we go, that looks better. And what you're trying to do is just line up like where is, where are these cuts? How are the rocks flowing? <clears throat> and trying to find uh, good images to use in those spots, or good parts of images to use in those spots. It's kind of a weird area. Okay, so I can go through and do that. That works. I can also do a selection. So if I select an area here, copy it from my base layer, and then paste it. Oops, make sure I'm on the right layer here. Let's is a clone. This one is um, copy. Oops, make sure auto select layers off. That's why I did that. And what I can do is just kind of move this around um, until I find a good spot for this to sit. So like right there seems like a good spot. And then I can put a layer mask on it and then go in with my brush and then just kind of erase some of that. Now if you do it too harsh, um, it's definitely going to look odd. It's going to look like, especially here, the rocks blending in here like it's a ghost image. So a lot of times what you have to do is shrink your brush, um, maybe even sometimes pick a different shaped brush. Oops. And then start to brush some of those things back in. And what that does, it just gives you, um, it gives your clone a little bit more believability. You know, to the point where, you know, can you even see where it's at? So 
and I'm making sure that I'm always on that layer mask while I'm doing this part. There we go. All right, so that's looking like it's sewed up pretty good. Uh, another thing I can do is grab an area. So like, just like that brick, copy that brick and paste him. And when I hit a spot, let me move this to the top of this. When I hit a spot that may be, you know, not convincing enough, um, I can try to throw this brick in here. And the nice thing is I can shrink it down if I need to. I can rotate it if I need to. Whatever I need to do to cover up the seam, that's what I'm going to do. So like that works. And then... If I were to duplicate this, shrink it down some, and minimally I could uh, kind of scale it a little bit, and you know, the uh, illusion will still be there. I wouldn't want to do it a whole lot, but I could. Uh, I have this layer and that layer, these two are that brick. I'm just going to control E to merge them, throw a layer mask on them, and then just do some cleanup on these edges here. And this is a pretty low res image. Um, if we had a higher res image, obviously we'd be doing the same kind of thing. So it's looking better. Uh, this is also a pretty simple image. Sometimes you have to deal with lighting from one side to the other. And here we do have a minimal lighting issues. So it's pretty good. All right, now let's tackle this gray area. So I'm just going to go back to that layer zero, make a marquee. And then copy it, paste it, and then drag it down to that area. When I did my copy, I just copied this one layer. I want to control shift C and that will copy everything that we see, like exactly as it is. And then paste. There we go. And then I'm going to scoot this over so that we see it lines up pretty good with that one. That's pretty good. And then we'll throw a layer mask on <clears throat> and then just go through and kind of uh, clean up the edge so it's not so perfect. Like in 3D, you want everything to look natural, so like imperfect is perfect to a degree. This brush is so big, it's like causing these weird edges. It's better. Don't be afraid to download some Photoshop brushes online. Uh, you'll find that it is very helpful if you have a good brush collection. So 
The nice thing about this pattern is that it is pretty random as far as how the bricks are stacked and sizes and shapes. Um, so we do have a lot of room to kind of play to get this thing to work correctly. Just a matter of when you see like an actual like line going across a bunch of bricks, that's where the illusion really starts to fade. So you get the idea of what I'm doing. So you can fast forward this and just hit it until you get to the next part. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna take all my layers here. Oops, this is patch. And this one is single bricks. I'm going to take all my layers and group them, <clears throat> and then I'm going to control A, control shift C, and then control V. And that'll be called repair, and then this is the result of the repair. So I'm going to take this one and then re-offset it. Opposite, so negative 800, negative 800. This gets us back to where it originally was because we want to see is it still good. And you'll see um, typically like right here that there is an issue. Okay, so let's put that back. Another layer, another clone stamp or whatever, however we want to attack it. there just finding a nice like little uh, hole area uh, is awesome because then it's just like you know that's where the rock ended So that's good. I don't see any lines going across the center here, so everything looks good there. Um, let's merge those two together. And then just to double check, we'll offset it again. Everything still looks good. I think we're going to tweak that a little bit. Let me go here. Let's grab deep seam there we go uh, maybe another seam right there no, I guess that's good yeah, right there I'll put it All right, cool. I'm happy with that. All right, so now this would be a good color texture for what we're using um, in our stuff. So I'm going to call this color. That's basically, this is the finished one. This is what we would bring into our 3D app and drop that on. Um, what I'm going to do then is duplicate this. And I'm just going to um, grab all the dark light, the dark areas. So if I select color range, uh, you'll see that it, in this case, defaults to the darks. If not, I would click in a dark area, change my fuzziness. That's good. And then I would make a new layer, <clears throat> and I would fill that new layer with um, black. Okay, so if I hit all this, you can see black. 
and then I'd make another new layer, put underneath, fill that with white. And then what this is going to do is that when we get into like a, a 3D application, uh, it'll actually use this information as where the cracks and crevices are. So I'm going to take these two layers and merge those and call this bump. Um, I didn't need this color copy. I don't know why I made that. Okay, so I have bump and I have color. All right, so that's it. So now we just need to save these out. <clears throat> so of course, save it regular. And then I will save it as, and this will be called um, seamless gray. And then uh, this is the black and white image. So this is going to be underscore bump. So it's great brick underscore bump. And I'll save this as a TIFF with no layers. Yes. I'll turn that off. Uh, I'm going to enhance this brick color a little bit just to give it a little bit of a pop. And I'm going to go to, let's say, um, curbs so you want pretty neutral um, coloring but I think that just gives it a deeper color there we go so now we'll call this save it as a tiff so we can just click singly on that change this to color turn off the layers yes and yes. All right, this part you don't need to do. Uh, I'm just going to show it if, in case you have an interest in seeing what we're doing or why we're doing it. So in a 3D app, I would make a plane. So this would be, let's say, a wall. And I'm going to go to assign a new material. And under the color, I'm going to connect our image that we have. So to the color, I'm going to connect the color. And then when I hit 6, there it is. And then I'm going to hit the back button here, go down to geometry, go to bump. And then connect the bump. And then what we can see is the bump is pretty um, heavy on this. I'm just going to take the bump down. Say point one should be good. <clears throat> and then I think I want to also go to specular weight. I'm also going to drop the bump on that. All right, so now if I were to throw in a light, and I made the light brighter so you can actually see it. That bump is still like crazy amount, so let's go back to the bump and make sure under my color balance, alpha is luminance. Yes, okay. All right, so that's better there. And then I'm just going to take my roughness up a little bit. So now I have a brick wall. Okay, now where the um, seamless part comes in and this is just a uh, kind of keep things nice and clean is what I'm doing here
Come on. There we go. Alright, so that's all connected. So now what should happen is this is what our brick looks like <clears throat> now. When I go to repeat it, let's say two times and two times, a seam isn't right away noticeable. Okay, you can kind of see, you know, it's a bit lighter in the center here, but overall it's not as noticeable as it would have been before. Um, and if I made this, let's say five and five, you'll start to see the seam more. Um, where you actually start to see the pattern more, the repetition, where you can see there's five going across and five going across. Um, and that's just inherent of how they work. Uh, but going from two or one or whatever, we can really kind of loop this thing or repeat it many times. Um, especially if we're... Oops, let's set that to If we're close like this, it's a little bit less apparent that there's repeating. When we're zoomed out really far back, then it's a lot more apparent. And the more we kind of play with the settings in here, the more looks we can get from this brick. Um, so that's the purpose of kind of processing these images because in 3D this just looks you know, super flat and boring like this. But making some of these textures on them um, can really help it, you know, pull off and create a nice look. All right, so that is that one. So you should have three files for this one. One of them being this image that has the bump and the color and obviously the repair layers. Um, you should also have the seamless gray brick bump, seamless gray brick color. Okay. And now we're going to go to the next one. So we'll start off with this brown brick. And what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this one over and over and over again. So this one is a seamless one that I downloaded from the internet, um, a website called textures.com. So I'm going to select all. I'm going to define a pattern. I'm going to call this brick. I'm going to make a new document. <clears throat> and we didn't do this in the other one, but typically you want to have a starting size for your texture. So 4096 is a good size to start off with. And I will hit OK. Make sure the resolution doesn't matter. The RGB color does matter. 8-bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer, fill it with a color, and then just double click. And then go down to Pattern Overlay. And then in here, I can pick that brick texture, and you'll see how it fills this entire screen. So before we had that small, okay, we had this small texture, now it repeats. And with this one, it's pretty boring because it's pretty much the same thing over and over and over again. Um, but that's what we want to start with. So now that we have that, I can close this image. And I'm going to drop in some stuffs here. So a couple things, um, there's a texture, I'm going to install that texture, or the font, not texture, and I'm going to grab, come on, this piece of graffiti, and this um, leak, and I'll grab this too. So I'm just going to drag these into Photoshop. And my computer freeze and then it came back so uh, I just dropped these into Photoshop so I have this wizard <clears throat> um, the brick and so on so I'm gonna grab the wizard and bring him into the other one so I can hit control a and control C and then paste him in here 
Now I need to get him so it looks like he's actually like a piece of graffiti uh, or spray paint on the brick. So I don't need this because if this was graffiti, it would just be basically the black outline. If I double click this layer uh, off to the right, then I can go and play with the blend if gray area. And then I can say this layer, and you see how they drag the black, it gets rid of the black. <clears throat> if I drag the white, it gets rid of the white. Okay, and if there's a little bit of fringing, that's fine. You know, I don't want to go too far because I'll get rid of it, but um, I want to find like a nice area to go with. That looks good. Oops. And if I zoom in, I can see the edges. They look good. I want to put this where it would typically be. So down here in the bottom, it wouldn't be like at the top. It's kind of a weird spot for graffiti to be. And I'm also going to hit Control T and maybe scale this down some. And also maybe rotate it. Maybe just a little bit like that. Okay, so now if you look at him, uh, he's basically covering up the brick. So if someone were to actually painted this, um, it'd definitely be dark in those areas, but he would be like on top of it, kind of blended in a bit better. So I'm gonna go through my modes and try to find one that's going to blend in nicely. Like that linear linear light seems to work good because you can still see the lines through it. But I'd like to go through all of them just to see which one's going to look best. All right, so that linear light one seems to be a good one. All right, so I'll use that or vivid light. Yeah, that looks weird. Right. Uh, multiply could also work <clears throat> as long as it's not too dark so that should be good that would work too um, I could also double click on this and do a fill um, when I do that obviously it's not filling it the way it should be um, even if I change the mode here it's not going to do anything because this this layer of blending right here um, is cutting it off so then we don't see that um, it would be nice if there was an option here I don't see that option so we hit OK so what I'm gonna do is just uh, click on this make a new layer there's another way to do this but I just this is the quick way I make a new layer put it on top and I just merge the two layers together and that bakes in those changes so now when I double click and then I say color overlay now I have a bit more control over that color. So I can pick whatever color I want on top of it. So this would be like the graffiti color. It's a weird color for graffiti. There we go. Okay, so hit okay. And then I'll just change the mode back to multiply and you'll see that we don't get the same effect. So because of how this is working, we don't get the uh, same blending that we would get before. Uh, and really all of these now no longer work just because of how Photoshop calculates uh, these effects and these modes, okay? So again, what I need to do is make a new layer, merge them together, <clears throat> and then I can change this and then it works, okay? So it's just something to be aware of um, as to how Photoshop uses the layers and the blending modes together. Okay, and I think that multiply is probably going to be the best one for what we're doing. Well, we can try taking opacity down. Yeah, actually opacity at 88 seems to be a good fit. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is blend these edges a little bit. It's a little bit harsh. So if I control click on this, and I go to um, modify feather. Let's say I set it to three pixels. It's feathering the inside, so I don't want to touch the inside, so I'm going to invert it. There it is. 
and then I'm just going to hit delete. Oops. Oh, we didn't feather it very good. Let's try that again. Control click that, select modify feather, maybe two pixels. Let's invert. Do the invert first, and then we'll feather. There we go. It's a little soft, so I I'll do it one more time. Inverse, modify, feather, one pixel. There we go. So it just softens the edges a little bit more. That should be good. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff you could do too, so I can go through and I can actually smooth the selection. Just deselect that totally, and then just fill it in with whatever color I want. And that will help kind of blend it and feather it. And then take that opacity down. if I want to come on I can compare what those two things look like okay so they look pretty similar in this case it's not gonna be a huge deal which one I go with um, I actually like the dark one better so let's keep the dark one all right so there's the graffiti um, I also want to use I can close that this here um, this here as like drops that would be like on the top of this if rain happened and it was like pouring down so I'm going to grab everything and copy it go into this and paste it hit control T rotate it around and just place it at the top and give it some scale And then duplicate it, give it some overlap, but not too much there. It's good. And then duplicate this again. I'm just holding Control, Alt, and Shift. And then these three layers are that. So I'm just going to um, uh, merge it. That should work. And then hit Control, T, and maybe just give this a little bit more hold down here. I can't go too far because it'll look streaky, uh, like even more streaky, like pixelated streaky. And then I'm just also going to scoot it up a little bit. There we go. So now it looks kind of, you know, weathered. And then this one, I want to use some of this data on this just to break up the brick so it's not so the same. So if I just copy this and paste it, Uh, I'd be careful how I scale it. If I scale it too big, it's really going to be grainy, and that's going to look um, not nice. Uh, same thing if I stretch it out like this. It'll look really distorted. Again, not nice. So I'm going to keep it somewhat small. That should be good. It's just going to be for texture is all. Um, go through my modes. Yeah, overlay looks like it's going to be a good one to use. Um, I just have to do a little bit of processing on it. Okay, so on overlay, we're really seeing the dark areas, so I want to get rid of these light areas. So I can double click, and if I do that, oops, sorry, the other one, I maintain those dark areas but get rid of the light areas. Let's set that to overlay. You'll see now we have some nice texture on the bricks where it's not too overpowering. Uh, if I double click that, I can always change this. So if I want to see what it's going to look like with more texture or pulling this one. That's good. Uh, I can also click on this and hit Control L for my levels. And pull these together. And what that will do is it will make my blacks and whites on the original one a bit sharper. So I'm going to 
pull this down to about here, and then duplicate it, rotate it, and then oops, merge these together, set them to normal first, then merge them together. And then I overlap this again, and I'm going to overlap this one, and overlap that one. Now, on each one of these, I'm going to put a layer mask, Oops, one at a time. And this will help me just blend these together some. So big brush, take my flow down some, too much. I basically just want to hit that bottom edge so that it appears to blend a little bit better. Like that. Go to the next one. Same thing. Go to the next one. Same thing. Then I can even go to this one and hit the top of it. And then I'm just going to merge all these together, set this to overlay, and then pull that opacity down. Okay, like I said, it's just meant to break up the surface some. Not from this far back, but like up close. It looks a lot better than just these plain bricks. Okay, and I could even have taken this and duplicated it. Oops. Hit Control T, rotated it, and that would give me just another layer level of material um, to drop on top of there also. And if you're curious, like, what does it look like without anything else? Oops. Let's turn that effect. I guess that's not going to work. Hmm. You make a 50% gray here. There we go. So that's what it would look like without it. So you can see that there are definitely some lines, but when we add it on top of the brick, you don't notice it too much. Okay, not really at all. Cool. So this material is done. So let's group everything together so we can see everything. So just group. There's your background in there. And this will be the color. And first thing, let's save this as Sarcona Brick. Okay, now we'll save it as our TIFFs. And the reason we're saving TIFFs is because uh, the 3D software likes TIFFs best. Sarcona Brick Color. No layers. All right, so now we need our uh, bump map. <clears throat> so if I go to this here, and let's see, I don't need that. That shouldn't really bump. This will bump. I think that should actually have some sort of blending happening on this too. Yeah, just a little bit of opacity on there seems to do some good to it. I think I also want to pull this white in a little bit. All right, let me turn that back on now and save the color out again. Sometimes you'll notice stuff after. It's not a huge deal. Just resave it. All right, so now let's make the uh, bump map. So the bump should have uh, all of this stuff here. Not so much that. I don't want that on there. So that's what the bump should look like, um, but in grayscale. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the layers that are part of that 
and I'm going to copy them. So I just hold Alt and drag it above and out. Come on, get out of that group. There you go. And I group those. We'll call this bump. And I really want to isolate just like we did in the other one, just these grout areas so that those are a bit whiter. So if I go to the top of this and I hit um, hue and saturation, I pull the saturation down. That gives it a pretty black and white look. And then I'm going to add a uh, curves to this and really choke out a lot of the black. And then pull up that. So you'll see now we get this nice texture of pretty much blacks and whites. And it's fine if there's some, you know, pieces of white in the black areas and white in the or black in the white areas. Uh, that's fine. That'll still work. So now I'm going to save this, and this will be Sarcona brick. And I'll just change the word color to bump. I'll turn my layers off and then hit save. Okay, so now this one's done. So we'll just save this one. Bump color. Oops, I'm going to color and turn those back on. There we go. Cool. So I can save that. Close it. Close that. And then our last one is going to be these windows. Okay, so I'm going to double click this just to unlock it. <clears throat> and what I want to do is um, make a color map of this and some other maps. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, just call this color. This is pretty much exactly what I want for the color to, look, to be here. Uh, I do want to have some graffiti on here. Uh, so let's go and grab that tiger. There he is. And if we use some of our selection tools here, like the magic wand uh, tool, we can click on pieces, or we can try the quick selection tool, maybe with the bigger brush. We'll see how well this does. He's very close to the color of the bricks behind him, uh, but we'll see how much that matters. Hold Alt and I can sort of track from it. And I just keep clicking and dragging basically just to say this is stuff that I want selected. Hold Alt, deselect that. So it does a pretty okay job of selecting this. Um, we're not too concerned with it being 100% accurate because of where this is going to end up. So it's a good tool to use for something like that. All right, so I think I got them. So I'm going to hit Control, uh, not Control C. I'm going to go to my mask, and there he is. Now I can hit Control T and then shrink him down. And then I have to decide how I want to display him. So. Maybe like this, I'll display him. All right, that one's good. And then I don't want this middle part <coughs> where that line is right here to have that. So I'm just going to draw a marquee straight down the middle. And then just fill that with black. And then obviously it shouldn't be anywhere past this. So I just marquee it and fill that with black. Actually, I don't think I want them outside that at all. There we go. So now it looks like he's just kind of like on the white area. 
and then changing our mode we'll be able to get him to look like he's kind of more embedded in it So I think multiply is going to be a good one for this, and then maybe taking the opacity down just a bit. And then you'll see there's a couple areas here that probably need his picture removed from that. So I'll grab my wand. Tolerance up some, 233 now. Make sure I'm clicked on the right layer. There we go, much better. I'm going to turn off contiguous, see if I get a better selection that way. I do, okay. Yep, that's good. All right, so I go back to this. Fill those areas with black. <clears throat> and now it'll look like his image is, you know, cut off around those areas. Cool. All right, so that's my color. So let me group this. We'll say color. Now, we have some spots where, um, obviously, we need bump. If we look, we have a bit more different surfaces. So we have basically this plane here, or level. We have this level there. Then there's a little bit of a blend between them, okay? Not too concerned about the brick on the outside. I'm more focused on the glass here. So we can actually just crop the glass only. So I just marquee the glass and this little bit of blue. Then we can kind of focus on that. All right, so let me save my color out. So this is uh, not glass, windows, color as a TIFF, no layers. And there we go. So now let's duplicate this, and then this will be our bump. So looking at this, what we need. We don't need this. This is not part of a bump. This would not actually be like a bumpy surface. It's like a, uh, a picture that's on there or something. It's super thin. You wouldn't notice it. Uh, we do have this, which is our background area. And I need to take this <clears throat> and use it to create that bump map. Now, if I did what I did in the previous one, let's say I added a hue and saturation to this. And then I added a curves. You'll see it's going to be very difficult to isolate uh, just the areas we need. We can do parts of it, but we're definitely not going to get to the level we need to get. <clears throat> Mainly because this here, um, this is at the same level as the glass. Okay, So this doesn't really help us out too much. So I'm just going to delete these two. And I'm going to go to my marquee tool. And I'm just going to outline the different areas. Okay, so I outlined one area here. This, all of these are basically in the same layer, same layer, level, and then these outer pieces are on a different level. So I basically have two levels I need to deal with. Um, I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm just going to fill this with, I'll just say black for now. Okay, then I'm just going to duplicate this and scoot it over. And then do the same thing here. Once I have a whole panel here, then I can grab all of them and duplicate it for the bottom. And then duplicate it again. And then I can grab all those and duplicate it for this whole side. Okay, so I just made one and I duplicated it for all the other ones. Looks like I might need to trim this one a little bit. There we go. So now that looks pretty even. 
Double check the top. Yep, it's good. All right, now there's also a seam going down the middle, so I want to isolate that as well. And then this on the side. And then this on the side. Okay, so that's all the stuff that's on that level. Uh, now I'm going to make another layer, just put it underneath, and color it white. So now I have my two levels, the black and the white area. And the black area is going to be less bumped up than the white area is. Uh, now I do need to have some feathering blurring on this, so I'm just going to control a, a control shift C and then paste this above it so I have basically a flattened out layer and then I'm just going to give it just a, a hint of a blur okay just so I have something there because otherwise it's just too crisp okay so like two pixels are probably good um, but I think one might be better yes so one seems like it's good all right so there's my bump Uh, cool. Let me double check the bump here. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, so now I need um, some other stuff. So one of the things I'll need is a uh, reflection map, like what is actually reflective in this image. So all the glass is going to be reflective. Okay, none of the wood will be reflective. So if I just borrow the bump, I can use that as my starting point. I'm going to delete this top one. And start here. Okay. So all the stuff on the bottom here should be black. There's no reflection or very little reflection on that area. So I'm just going to fill that area with black. Uh, all of the bars should be black. All the windows should be white. So if I just take this and invert it, oops, take control I, hit this and invert it, <clears throat> you'll see how I get white where the windows are. And then this is still white here because I filled it. I should have actually just deleted it. There we go. And then this I can delete. This center piece I can delete. You can see how quick this is going to go because I already had basically the shapes set up. Oopsie. There we go. So now we have all the reflection is right here. Um, I'll turn off the bump. And then all the non-reflection is right there. Now we do have some areas here. This wouldn't be reflective and neither would that. So I need to uh, add that in there. <coughs> so I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to go to my color. I'm going to go to my wand, and I'm just going to uh, quick select. Okay. Let me go to my wand here, and I'll turn contiguous on. I'll turn my samples down to 33. All right, that gives me a pretty good uh, spot. And then I'll just delete that from that area. Okay, so now this one is reflective, non-reflective. Okay, so that way I know this is you know, where my reflection isn't. This is where my reflection is. Okay, I didn't save the, the bump out yet, uh, but I will. So I'm going to duplicate reflection. And then the last one we're going to do is transparency. And then with this one, uh, what we want to do is I need to tell it what areas are transparent and what areas are not. So the reason I duplicated reflection is because um, basically all the windows are transparent. So that's high. And then this area is also transparent um, on there. Okay. So basically, if I just get rid of these things here, I just fill those with white. I should have all my transparent stuff. Uh, the only thing I need to do, though, a little bit different, is this is 100% transparent, 
where the windows are kind of like a frosted transparent. So I'm going to make a new layer, drop it under here, and I'm going to put this at uh, complete white. There we go. And then this reflection layer, I'm actually going to control click it and give it like a gray color. So now this is no transparency, uh, partially transparent, and then very transparent. Okay. So now we'll save these out. Sarcona underscore, oops. Uh, I always want to click this tip first. I don't know why I keep doing that. There you go. Make sure all the naming is consistent. So this is my transparency. This is my reflection. And then finally, this is the bump. And then, of course, I need to save this as Sarcona underscore Windows. All right. So for your turn in, <coughs> I'll make a folder here that says turn in 3D. That way it's just a little easier to see exactly what we're turning in. So we have the brick wall that we did. Uh, not the gray one, just the regular brick. And we had two images that went with that. We had our window, <clears throat> and we had four images that went with that. And then we had our seamless brick, and the two images that went with that. Okay, so I don't want or need any of these ones because those are the um, source images. What I have are these ones uh, that are in there. Uh, I didn't end up using the font here, but you could definitely, if you wanted to write something on one of those, you could write something on one of those, like type out some graffiti type thing. Um, here's what the brick bump looks like. Open this with preview. There's a brick color, brick bump, brick color, brick bump. So you can verify that yours looks similar. Here are my windows. This is the uh, bump map. This is the color. This is my reflection, and this is transparency. This is the gray brick bump, gray brick color. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to go into 3D and set these up, and then uh, I'll show you what they look like after. All right, so here's all three of those inside of my 3D software. You can see there's a ball behind it. And it's hard to see because the glass is just so uh, frosty. If I take this and maybe move it forward. So you can definitely see now there's like a dark area right there. And we see the bump in there. Okay, so that's the, the purpose of doing this assignment and doing these things is that we have... Um, basically 3D process texture stuff that we could use inside of any environment. If it's a street scene, a character, or whatever, uh, these techniques will be indispensable. Um, so don't forget them if you are in a 3D program or decide to do 3D stuff that this is the stuff you'll need to know. Cool, so that's this week's lecture. Uh, you'll turn in all of these images right here, so make sure you have, everything's labeled correctly, and don't forget to post in the discussion board 
and post a reply.